right now it looks like students are getting rulers because they know they're going to be drawing of lines. lines. That's right. And rulers are very good for drawing lines. So right now we're covering 3-3, solving systems. I bet I can write inequalities like super, super fast. Let's see how fast I can do. All right, there we go. Solving systems of inequality. Now I'm going to highlight the first equation in blue. I think it be a little bit for you. Okay. So blue, we're going to highlight that one in blue. Then, in the next one, we're going to highlight this one in this awesome magenta color. All right? So what I would like you to do in your journal, you don't have to highlight them in colors. You can't. But in your journal, I do want you guys to write a x plus b y is less than or equal to c. All right. All right. And underneath this one, I want you guys to write a x plus b y is greater than or equal to c. Now we're going to solve these. All right, a traditional way, and then we're going to do a non-traditional way. All right. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you guys just separately over here. I'm going to put x minus y is less than or equal to, and we're going to change this to slope-intercept form. Because right now this is not in slope-intercept form; it's in standard form. That's right. Good job. It's in standard form. So. In order to get it to slope-intercept form, we have to basically, here's what I want you guys to write in your journal. We are going over, once again, how to solve for y, which means we need to isolate the y variable. And right now, it's not by itself. That's an x next to it. So what you got to do, Blue? You, you could have said, add a negative x, and that would have been okay. All right? got to get additive inverses, right? So we're going to take away an x here. That zeroes it out. We're going to take away an x over here. We can't combine those because those are definitely not like terms. All right, so here's what we have. We have a negative y is less than or equal to. Now I'm going to move the x's up front and put the constant right here in the back. You could multiply everything by a negative or you could divide everything by a negative. Now, there's something that's very important, though, that happens with pesky little inequality signs. When you divide or multiply by a negative, what happens, Betty? It flips. That's right. The sign flips. So watch what happens. Ready? It goes from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. Now, that just becomes a lot. Ooh, a negative divided by a negative becomes a positive, and two divided by a negative one becomes a minus two. So there's R. Equation in slope intercept form. So let me explain to you right now. We have a slope. Our slope is equal to 1. Our y intercept is equal to a minus 2, negative 2. Now, this inequality sign, all right, that greater than or equal to sign is going to tell us two things. So anytime you see a greater than or equal to sign in your journal, I want you guys to write down what does greater than, by the way, that means. Greater or equal. You can write that down so that you put words with the symbol. Greater or equal to. That lets me know, this equal to part right here, that lets me know you are going to have a solid line. It's not going to be dotted, it's going to be solid. Okay, so we can draw a nice solid line. This greater than part that I'm serving, <coughs> that greater than part, lets me know I'm going to shade everything above the line. So shade above. That gives me directions. So the greater than part tells me to shade above. The equal to part lets me know I'm going to have a solid line. Let's see if I can get rid of this little tiny dot. Don't do that. All right. Let's go over and graph this line and see what we get. What is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept at a... Negative 2, so right here in your journal, you're going to put a point right there at a negative 2. And then we're going to apply a slope of 1, which means up 1 over 1, right? 1 over 1 means we go up 1 and over 1. Up 1, over 1 to the right, to the point. Up 1, over 1 to the right, to the point. 
once you do like, you know, a few, few dots, now you take your ruler, make a nice solid line, not dotted, nice solid line, and connect all of those dots just like that. With a nice solid line. And then where are we going to shade? We're going to shade everything above the line. So right here we're going to go everywhere above this line. Try to get close to the line. Now if you go over it, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. McCauley, would be proud of me. I remember all my elementary school teachers. Mrs. McCauley, Mrs. Moreno, Mrs. Green, Mrs. Christensen, Mr. Lewis, first guy teacher, fourth grade. Right. Then Mr. Maggie, he was awesome. He talked a lot about chess. All right. And he loved George Moore and John Madden, so he was him better for the teacher. Then I had Mrs. Savage, the sixth grade. She was awesome. Mrs. Savage. Mrs. Savage. She was awesome. Listen, well, okay. she did what she told told you to do what she told you to do. You were safe. And I was very good at following instructions, so I was always safe. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes. I'm sure students came up with specific names. All right. But hey, you can't control the awesome. But she was awesome. All right. So there we go. There is our graph. Perfectly graphed. Greater than or equal to. Here we go. Now, we're going to do the next one. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to write, ready? X plus 2Y is greater than or equal to 1. And once again, we are going to solve for Y. So in your journal, here's your next opportunity to practice solving for Y. Now, it's okay. You don't have to learn how to solve for Y. All right, because if you don't learn in high school, they have developmental courses that you will be allowed to take in college. All right, and those courses are free, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right. So, hmm, how are we going to isolate the y variable? What do we got to do? That's right. We're going to take away x from this side. We're going to take away x from this side. And here's what we're left with. We're left with a two y is greater than or equal to a negative x plus a 1. Notice, all I did was take this negative x, move it up front, take the 1, put it right there in the back. That's right. Divide everything by 2. Now, this is where students sometimes make a mistake. They're not sure exactly how to write this when you have a negative x over 2. Negative I want you to understand. Say it to Negative 1x. Negative 1x over 2, but how could we rewrite that with the slope in front? Negative. That's right. Negative. You said that. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. But Shane, you're right. Negative one half of an x plus one half. Now, why is it beneficial to know that it's a negative half of an x and not? Oh, because that tells us our slope, and we need to know how to apply a slope of what? Negative one. Half, which means we go down one and we go over two. No, we don't. We don't have to flip the sign on this one. Please. Because we didn't divide by a negative, we just divided. Okay. Over here, we divided by a negative, so therefore the sign was flipped. But here we just divide. So whenever you multiply or divide, you don't you don't flip the sign. It's only when you multiply or divide by a negative that the sign is. All right, now, you guys have a graphing calculator. You guys could type this equation into your calculator and check it, your table, check your x, y table for a point. Now, I'm not going to do that because I know if I plug in a 1 for x right there, <coughs> if I plug in a 1 right there, I get a negative half plus a half. What's negative half plus a half? Zero. So I just use some logic to find one point. So what I'd like you to do on your paper at one zero, put a point right there at one zero. Now, what is our slope? What's our slope? Our slope is what? Negative one half. So I could go down one and over two and put a point. Down one, over two, put a point. Oh, I ran out of room. What else can I do? I can go up one and over two to the left. Follow the pattern. 
very easy to follow the pattern. This is a pattern where the slope is negative one half, down one over two, down one over two. Now this one, you're also have a greater than or equal to symbol, don't you? This is your inequality right here, which means it's the same instructions as this. So what kind of line are we going to draw? Solid. And where are we going to shade? Everywhere above it. Now this is where it becomes very important to understand what the answer actually is. Like Okay, now that we're doing all of this shading, what is my final result? Oh, I did a horrible job shading. Wish I could erase it. Yeah, it would be very disappointing. All right, now listen. It wasn't supposed to go across the line, but you see where the shading overlaps? Where the shading overlaps is what's called the solution region. That's your answer, everybody, in this region. Any point that is on this line and this line that's within this region and any point that's in the shaded area is a solution, which means if I put a point right there, is that a solution? Yes. I put a point right there, is that a solution? Yes. How about right there on the line, is that a solution? Yes. How about just barely below? No. How about oh, it's on the line, it's on the line over here. No, it's got to be within the solution region. And that's your final answer for number one. Now, we did this tr a traditional way. What did we do? We solved for y by changing it from standard form to slope intercept form. Okay? The next video, we're going to do it a non traditional way of graphing. And you guys can choose whichever way that you want to graph it. I just want accurate graphs. And I want you to point at the solution region on your paper. So take this right here that you put in your journal and right now put it on your paper.